Hey everyone, hope everything is going well. There's an update to the case, and I talked about this the other day regarding stolen cards. And it's regarding Enrico versus Edward Siegel. And there was a default judgment that was granted in favor of Enrico. That was the fall of last year. Now, what's going to happen is there will be a jury trial that will determine the issues of the damages. So how much is it going to be? David Kahana told me last fall it's $30,000. Could it be more? What is the jury going to decide? That is the question. And for those that don't remember, we could take a look at Sports Card Radio. They did a decent job, and I'm going to comment a little bit about this. Let's take a look at a video from over a year ago. Defamation. Defamation. Defamation is the word. Right? Slander and defamation. Then it becomes, you know, something that you have to respond to. So for all we know, the MJ could still be tied up in a loan with Investacard. Who really knows? The second card, the 09 exquisite Bill Russell, autograph numbered 8 of 10. Prism God sold that to another one of your favorite influencers, Windy City Sports Cards. The crazy thing is, Windy City Sports Cards... And as I've mentioned before, there were cards that were loaned to Investacard and Prism God was involved in that. Let's take a look at this, though. Knows these cards were stolen from Enrico. He absolutely knows that. Here are text messages from Windy City Sports Cards where he's trying to negotiate a settlement to Enrico. Quote, I talked to my lawyer and he said it might be better if I gave card back to Ralph, which is the real name of Prison God, and get my money back for the Bill Russell unless me and you can come to an agreement in writing stating we've made things right. And nothing can be done towards me if I keep the card. Here is another text message from Windy City Sports Cards saying that he has spoken with Prism God. And quote, Prism God is asking how much you need for the MJ, the one that was used in a loan with Investacard, with some kind of paperwork clearing the card from being stolen. Let me know when around to get this cleared up, unquote. And if you don't believe the text messages, here is Windy City Sports Cards putting a poll on his Instagram asking if he should give the card back. Yep. Now, it does appear that Windy City Sports Cards and Prism God have offered $7,000 to clear this up, but Enrico wants closer to 10000 because that is what he originally purchased the cards for way back in the day. This has gotten so serious that the United States Postal Service Office of Inspector General in Miami has looked into this. Unfortunately, many of the records from 2014, such as tracking numbers, are no longer kept. By our government, so there's not much they can do on their end to legally take action, as their burden of proof is much higher than this YouTube channel, for example. You are not the person that I have ever thought about suing. The third card sold for $1,800, and the buyer of this card actually did reach out to the victim, Enrico, and make things right with a very, very small, low, low three-figure settlement to Enrico. But what about Prism God? What about Windy City Sports Cards? I did reach out to Prism God for comment. He didn't. Okay. Very interesting case. And why do I keep on repeating this? Because a lot of people go to shows. And in the shows, when you're there and you're buying a high figure card, are you going to be going to Tiffany Card's website to see, hey, is this card stolen? And it wound up in this person's booth. And that's a layer of check that everyone probably needs to be doing. The auction houses need to be doing. And if you look at this video even further, um, Ryan, he's talking about PWCC. Let's take a look over here. <laughs> Jordan Dennis Rodman dual autograph and a 2003-04 exquisite Kobe Bryant limited logos autograph patch card have ended up on your favorite selling website, PWCC. And here is the Kobe Bryant currently listed for sale for $79,000. Brent Higgins, Betsy Higgins, Jesse Craig know this card is stolen. They were forwarded the police report and know about this from 2014, but they have done nothing. So, yeah, every auction house needs to 
strengthen their internal controls to prevent stolen cards from going on. And in addition, if you are going to a show, just understand the risk when buying high-end cards. What I usually do, I don't buy high-end cards anymore. I used to at one point. And now I'm looking at all this hanky-panky going down. I'm seeing Kurt's card care going on. I mean, I'm getting, um, you know, some payment from like some T-bonds and going to sell some stock soon because everything's overheated. I'm not going to be spending that money on cards because I see all that shady hanky-panky going on in this hobby. Kurt's card care, trimming, stolen cards. And the other day, uh, if you look at uh, what happened, let's take a look at the story. Let's look at this guy. Let's go to Manny Simone. I talked about this in my video the other day. But he called out Probstein. And he bought cards in a lot. And what happened was he sent a PSA. PSA said that they were fake and he's out of luck because probe scene won't respond and it's you can't file a credit card claim on probe stain. and I'm just looking at this the only reason why this case I think has gone to the level it has is because David Kahana behind the scenes is pushing for this he's helping out behind closed doors to make sure that Enrico will get reimbursed. Maybe not all of the money, but at least some of the money that he is owed regarding these cards. What happens, okay, in a case like this? What if someone like David Kahana is like, hey, look, let's try to get Manny reimbursed. Now, 1700 bucks isn't that much money, but... Here's the deal. If you're selling fake cards and it's known it's fake, you have to most likely settle with these people. Yeah, mistakes happen. If you sell a lot of cards, you may not even realize that you sold a stolen card. And then the receipts come about and you could prove beyond a shadow of a doubt. Well, technically, if they're fake and if they are or stolen, you're on the hook for it, in my opinion. So it is what it is. That's why I tell people, hey, look, be careful out there. A lot of people, they want to one-up you in this hobby. And I saw all sorts of weird behavior at C2E2. It's like everyone is for themselves rather than, hey, look, doing the right thing at the right time. Anyways, let me know your thoughts, and I'll talk to you later. See ya.